I'm Alice Loxton and I present documentaries over on History Hit TV. If you're passionate about all things history, sign up to History Hit TV. It's like Netflix, but just for history. We've got hours of ad-free documentaries about all aspects of the past. You can get a huge discount from History Hit TV. Make sure you check out the details below and use the code ABSOLUTEHISTORY, all one word when you sign up. Now, on with the show. In the early 1900s, our sailing boats traded across the globe. Dead ahead, 80 yards. And our fishing fleets fed the nation. It's a time that we often look back on with nostalgia. In it comes, in it comes, quickly. Heading, brilliant, boys. But what was it like for everyday communities who made their living from the sea? Four modern-day families are heading back over a hundred years to the start of the 20th century. Oh, gosh, look. To live for a month as a small fishing community on the wild, exposed coast of Anglesey. We're about to embark on the adventure of a lifetime. Look after each other. Daddy. As the families enter their third week on the island... One, two, three... In. The women get their first experience of fishing. Oh, there's a lobster! Wow. Oh, my God, look at the size of that! But with food running short and hungry mouths to feed... Keep coming, keep coming. Okay, the men are forced to set out on their toughest trip yet. Gav, this one's snagged under it. It's caught. Lift it, lift it! I'm not too concerned what kind of fish we catch. Let's just catch loads of them. Will they fall in love with the past, or will they fall apart on the 1900 island? Have we smashed it? Right. Uh, brush it down, Ev. I know, I know. Really good, Dad. Right. You can apply. One. It's early morning in the villagers' third week on the tidal island of Llanwyn, off the west coast of Anglesey. That's it. We need quite a bit of stones in there, boys. Professional fisherman with over 40 years' experience, Mickey Beachy, is teaching the men a new technique, preparing lobster pots to be set out at sea. I need six good pieces of bait from the shed that's in the barrel. It's quite a strong uh, smell going on. It's because we've got rotting fish. The men are using traditional hand-woven lobster pots. A piece of fish bait is fixed inside and the pots placed out at sea. Hopefully the lobsters will smell the bait and climb in through the top, becoming trapped inside. There's no supermarket on the corner. They're selling their produce with the catching. We've had dribs and drabs of fish or whatever, so it's a bit important for them to catch some lobsters so that they can sell it, get a few more, a bit more money in their pockets to be able to feed the families. Just like today, lobsters were a highly prized catch at the beginning of the 20th century proving popular with the upper classes. Here's a look. Here's a look. Oh, that's perfect. Bit of weight in there, isn't it? Yeah. Tell so you what, if we make a success of this over the next few days, we're going to go into that last week. We've got a bit of money on our hip. With five young children to feed, out of all the families, the success of the lobster potting is most important for Gavin Davis. Yeah. I want this to be really good, because if we have a good catch, we could eat really, really well. You can get by being hungry, but it'd be nice just to have that big lift in the community and have a successful couple of days. Have a seat, Yanni. Oh, thank you. Student Yannick Martinez has moved in with Clive and Cheryl Barker as a lodger. It's working really well. He's very, very easy company. Very helpful. Does a lot of collecting of the water. Yes, yeah, it's, it's good, all good. And the extra money's really useful. But to cover his costs, 
Yannick needs to work. Morning. Oh, morning. Morning. Morning, Joe. Morning. Thank you. See you later. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye-bye. He's managed to secure a job as an apprentice with Joe Ormond, the island shipwright. Come on in, Yannick. Thank you. Whereabouts were you born? I was born in Spain. My father's again. Okay. My mother is Spanish. Most of my life I've been in England. So I'm kind of more used to the people mm. and the way they are. Where would you ultimately settle, do you think? I think anywhere close to the sea would be... Here would be quite really nice. Cool. Yeah, this place is beautiful. So ancient. Mm, it is, yeah. It is. So long as the weather stays warm and I can jump into the <laughs> sea. <laughs> As an apprentice in 1900, Yannick's work and even his personal life would have been strictly controlled by the contract between him and his employer, Joe. The said apprentice will serve his master and obey his lawful commands. <laughs> he will not embezzle or waste the goods of his master, nor frequent taverns or alehouses. Very Can good. we read the terms and conditions one more time? <laughs> Apprenticeships go back to medieval times. By the late 19th century, there were over 340,000 apprentices across Britain. So the cut happens as it, as it comes towards you, not away from you. Yannick will be helping Joe to build a new dinghy for the community. <laughs> make it look real easy. If he can make a good impression. With potentially high earnings at stake, Mickey would rather not rely on a novice when it comes to the difficult job of setting the lobster pots at sea. Clive Barker from Kent used to fish for a living in his early 30s. We're rigging the pots with, obviously, a buoy and a line. They're weighted. They're going to be put over the side of the boat. All you'll see is the buoy floating. And then you just sit them there, baited, waiting for the big beetle to crawl in. Since Clive arrived on the island, he's been unable to sail and earn money because of a bad case of gout. It's been a testing time for him and his wife, Cheryl. Is it you struggling? That's all right, that's okay. But today has seen an improvement in his mobility. He's um, been chomping at the bit, found it very difficult having to stay shorebound while everyone else goes. And that's why he really needs to get out there. Okay, here we go. I was getting a bit disappointed by not being able to get out on the water, but because I'm going fishing now, by the looks of it, looking forward to it very much. Clive and Mickey are wearing modern life jackets alongside traditional oilskins made from waxed cotton, protecting them from the elements. You don't want to end up on the boulders, do we? No. The baited lobster pots need to be dropped close to the rocks around the island. I'm struggling to get a bring around. A tricky job as the swell's picking up. OK, you can drop that pot, Clive. He's gone. <sighs> Lovely to be out on the sea. Don't mind the rough water at all. <sighs> In the boat shed, Joe's got Yannick started on a set of oars for the new boat. Never plane off the edge like that, because that will just split. Oh, so yeah. you've always got to go into it. OK. Yeah? Yeah. Small remote communities like this relied on their own skills to make and repair all their fishing equipment. I'm on this island, constantly thinking about surviving and what I'm going to eat. <laughs> on my next meal, but here when I'm when I'm sort of working on the wood and on the oars, I sort of forget about everything else. It's like a meditation. Yeah, it's like I'm diving into a little world where only I and the oar exist. <laughs> so it's it's nice. <laughs> Natalie Davis is also adjusting to life on the island. 
sounds weird to say it, but it seems enjoyable today. Just sort of outside, it's gorgeous weather. And like everybody else is doing theirs, you can chat. Everyone's milling around, it's lovely. Oh, come on, Dad, jump in. You're going to get your feet wet in the sea there. Get the shark! Back it down. There's a shark! Back it down! Back it down! Back it down! Back it down! And I've got to do like this, and you do what I'm doing and go, oh! I would definitely say we're learning as the weeks go by. Get into grips with the routine of things. It, it has very quickly become like our normal life. For Lydia Power, life back home in Cardiff seems far away. We've got so much to be grateful for modern day, but if a lady from this era came into the 21st century, I think they'd be completely overwhelmed by the pace, expectations, and modern society. It's hard to beat the simplicity of life that we have here. With all the pots set, it's a waiting game to find out if they've caught anything. Until then, they've no choice but to eke out what's left in their store cupboards. Come on, I want to see clear plates. None more so than family of seven, the Davises. Have they got anything for after, Mum? Uh, apple. Whoa! <laughs> Give my apple to these. Yeah, it, that was excluding me and you. <laughs> the truth is, you're not eating enough. I am. Fine. You're not. No, I know you're not. not. You've had breakfast today, and that's it. How is that enough? You know, they're not complaining. They're just like, we'll have another bowl of porridge. You can't have porridge three times a day. There's just that nothing worse than that feeling of not being able to feed your kids. Two doors down, Lydia and her husband, Gareth, run the village shop from their front room. 12 through 6, 18. I'm in a position, I suppose, with a shop where I can see what people are buying and how well people are eating. Mm. Um, Cheryl and Clive are fine, Kate and Adwell are fine, um, but I am a bit concerned about the Davises. Yeah, yeah. The, the greatest need right now is, is food. School, OK. Uh -huh. Right, well, do you have to go to the house? Do you have to go to the house? As devout Christians, the Powers are a charity-minded family. When you think of, well, the Bible said they shared everything in common, yeah. especially mm. in small communities like this on the island. Yeah. And at the moment, I just feel there's need in our community. Yeah, and I think this is where, as a community, we need to pull together. With no social security safety net, it was down to local charities, institutions, and individuals to help those in need. We're thinking, you know, the Davises are struggling a bit financially yeah. um, and struggling to put food li quite literally on yeah, the table. Yeah, they We were thinking of putting together um, like a food hamper, essentially, yeah. Yeah. and that we can just present to them. Just if you give us some idea of what you'd mm. like us to yeah. contribute, we are more than happy. Tri thinking with Cheryl's home cooking, it'd be mm. lovely for you to cook. Yeah. Oh, so fine. if you do a yeah. meal yeah. and a pudding, yeah. I think that'd be amazing. Would... I've really, we've both really felt for yeah. them. I can't imagine the feeling, looking in the pot and there's nothing there. Yeah, I know. So that's fine, I consider it done. Hello. Hello, Hello. Shemai. Yeah, yeah, do Next stop, um, Kate Evans and her partner Arwell John from Swansea. I was going to ask, could we put some eggs in the hamper? But I'd be happy to donate four eggs. I'm just thinking as a family of seven, mm -hmm. um, could I push you to seven eggs? So they are one seven each. eggs. Uh... One each. Too much for you guys. Uh, yeah, quite okay. yeah. okay. okay. yeah. okay. well, thanks, guys. That's, Thank that's you. really kind of you. Thank you, Thank you so much. Guess. That'd be I great. Think it'll go
Love you. Love you. Next day, and Gavin's off with Mickey to check on the lobster pots, the potential gold at the bottom of the sea. I'm going for the off-white neutral look. Not getting out onto the water is proving a challenge for experienced rower Kate. In the 1900s, there are very few examples of women becoming part of a sailboat's crew. I would love to get out in the fishing boats and have a go. I started rowing when I was about 14 in the Bristol Channel. I'm then, when I was in my 20s, started rowing for whales. But what I've found in the last three weeks is that women were tied to the home and, you know, cut off from the workplace. Yeah, I was finding it a bit drudgery, really. The fight for women's suffrage was becoming increasingly intense at the beginning of the 20th century, with meetings and marches in many towns and cities. But it wasn't until 1918 that women finally got the vote. I don't think there's any limitations to abilities according to your sex is really if you're capable of doing the work just do the work as a man in the 1900 community for our well island living has proved more satisfying she has been really missing going out in the boats like she's a little bit jealous to be honest with you going for muscling this instead. Disappointing me. That's very disappointing. I'm not. I'm not giving up for a second. Not a chance. Adwell and I were up, both of us independently, all last night. Overnight, Kate's been having second thoughts about Lydia's charity hamper. Neither of us felt particularly easy afterwards with the idea of giving just such a demonstrative, obvious thing. Um, and in our heads, Gavin would be pretty crestfallen that he'd not been able to provide. And I know it's meant well, but I just, I just think we can do things on the quiet that aren't going to make them feel such a needy case. I think is a bit of a slap in the face, personally. If that's how you both feel, mm. then, you, you know, you're at liberty to do whatever makes you feel comfortable. Mm. If you'd rather but, give something small, and if you'd rather do it yourself, yeah. go ahead. I've done the meals. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's it, really. I can't yeah. do a lot. I mean, you didn't ask me to do any more, no, did you? No, but because I think this is using your gifts. That's right. I was also a little bit bristled by being slightly, or the feeling that we were slightly strong-armed into, oh, can't you give this much, can't you give this much? I don't like that. I don't, I don't give charity like that. Um, I, I, yeah, let so. me start then by just saying I'm really sorry that you felt um, pushed to give. No, it wasn't that we wasn't pushed to give, it was let just me, sort of the amount on it, but yeah. No, I'm sorry you felt that way. I, like I say, if you don't want to be a part of it, mm. you really don't. And personally, I cannot stand back and let friends starve. Give me a show, please, OK, Cher? OK, do you don't want a cup of tea? Sure. I have the kettle on. No, I'm fine, thanks. OK. I hope I didn't upset her. Sorry? I hope I didn't upset her, but I think I may have done. OK, 
kids can be a bit confrontational. I'm sure she doesn't mean to be, but come across as a little bit confrontational. We'd gone to bed so chuffed a bit that we were all coming together to meet this need to do something. Beacon. Whilst the hamper's a lovely idea, you're giving people a care package that'll last a day. It's not about giving people handouts, it's about giving them the means to maintain self-respect and dignity and work their own way out of those problems. There's two, there's two sources of meat there, of protein there, with the corned beef and the bacon. We tried to do something that would gather the community so yeah, I was really disappointed. The way we try and do that is by giving our time, giving what we can uh, with our skills, teaching. I spent yesterday teaching the kids to sew. So yeah, it's just a different way of doing it. So I'm going to get this. Just let it come on this. There we are. Perfect. Bloody perfect. Good boy. Spot on, mate. Here we go. Right. Right, pull it in. Let's have a look, see what we've got. Yeah, I'll right. grab hold of that. Keep it, keep it coming across the back of the boat. What? Uh, right. And there's nothing in it. It's another disappointment for the families. As of about an hour ago, we ran out of money. It's all been spent. Oh. Careful, Phoebs. little gifts and we just wanted to extend our love to you and make sure that you and all the kids have got no food in the house. Oh my goodness Lydia. Yeah. You are just oh my goodness. You're so caring. Oh you're the loveliest family. You're easy to love. You're easy to love. Oh my god this is really overwhelming. Thank you so much. So share us and all the cooking. <laughs> Oh my goodness, it's really overwhelming, it really is, but it's just so, so thoughtful. I feel so loved. They're just the best people. I don't think so I've ever been more excited to see a leak. You know, it, oh, oh my goodness. Thank you so, so much. No, you're welcome. That is so, so thoughtful. Oh, well, it was Lydia's yeah. idea and we all went along. Thank you so You're much. You're welcome. It's so, so special. It's quite nice, actually, because we're eating it. <laughs> Should we go and have it. some dinner? Yeah. yeah. Come on, yeah. yeah. Look at that. <laughs> look what they've got. I'm a little bit speechless here. Do you know what? Isn't that so, so kind? Look It's a big step for Gavin. <laughs> He's turned down previous attempts at charity within the community. Look at this. Isn't that lovely? We will eat tonight. Including mummy. Um. Hello. Hello, hello. I'm not very good at this, I'm just going to give you a hug and a kiss. Thank you very much. Thanks, Carl. And you? Is that all right? Uh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm holding it together, so I'm just going to do this. Oh. I'll even give you a kiss as well, mate. Oh, mate. There's really no, oh, there really was no need. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, You've got God. very generous parents. You. You're very lucky. Yeah. Love you. Love you too. Love you too. Oh. Tell you what, I'm going to enjoy this. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Yeah, you have a certain amount of pride as the so-called head of the house and you want to provide for your kids and you don't want people to think that you're struggling. But it, I've, I've not 
my pride hasn't taken a knock with this because I think it's come from such genuine, loving people. It, it's not felt like charity. It's just nice to be part of a community, isn't it? With the lobster pots unproductive so far, and food supplies and savings running low, Mickey's got a new plan. We've got a golden opportunity to go on a bigger boat. We're going to try betting. We're doing long lining, and we're doing hand lining. That's the good part of it. The bad part of it is maybe a couple of nights overnight on the boat. He's arranged for them to go fishing for further and longer than ever before. It's a big challenge for the novice fishermen and also a greater risk as they head into unknown waters using yet more new equipment. It's probably one of the most dangerous occupations you could have. Doesn't matter what era you're in. In the 1900s, Around one in 10 apprentice fishermen were lost at sea. 10% doesn't sound an awful lot, but if that 10% is your flesh and blood and your child, your brother, your son, you know, it's a, it's, it doesn't matter, does it, the percentages? It's your own flesh and blood that's gone. How are you doing? Hello. You okay? Yeah. Why have you got that face on? You're going away. Going away. Don't worry, we'll be fine. I've never really left my family for more than a few nights at a time, and even then it's very, very rare. So being away for two or three nights is a massive deal. I think because we've got five kids and we've got a busy life, that Natalie and I hugely rely on each other. So not being around means that everything's gonna fall on Natalie. You all right? Yeah. Do you want a hug? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I can see. Honestly, be fine. It's gonna be amazing, okay? Yeah. I promise you, it'll be brilliant. As Gavin's eldest son, it's falling on nine-year-old Jew to step up as the man of the house. You all right me going away for a couple of days? Doesn't worry you or anything. Just make sure you're a good boy for your mum, OK? Just make sure you help out as much as you can. I'll show you away. I'm going to try and earn some money as well. OK. Come here, then give us a hug. Be fine, all right? Mm-hmm. The fishing trip has implications for Kate, too. While the men are away, the lobster pots will still need checking. I've got uh, a proposition for you. How do you fancy a little bit of rowing? Yeah! Yeah. Good. <laughs> Lovely. Good. OK, there. Made my day. OK, well done. Well done, Ta Although women very rarely went far out to sea, they were often to be found fishing inshore from rowing boats. Yay! Get out of water! Been killing me just looking at it. In all honesty, it's a bit of a game changer for me actually, because to have something that takes me from this strip of houses would actually be pretty special for me personally. It's the next morning, and the men are heading down to board their new vessel. At 65 foot, 
she's a bigger boat than they're used to, allowing them to go out further and for longer, hopefully catching more fish. Of course I'm worried about him. He's quite old now to be going fishing. No communication. Won't know how they're doing, won't know anything. Yeah, yes, it is a big worry, big worry. Move well, back quickly, you know. You'll be that busy. Dad, how far are you going? Don't know. But I'm coming back. How many fish are you going to get? How many fish do you want me to get? No. Nine. Okay, Daddy, we're going to go. Okay. No, Daddy, no, Daddy. Carry two kids. Carry two kids. Okay, love you lots. Love you lots. Love you lots. Carry two back. Love you, Dad. Look after each other. Yeah. Carry. Don't fall overboard, eh? It's going to miss him. It's going to mess them all up. Who's your daddy, Griff? It will be the longest the men and women have been apart since they arrived on the island, and the stakes are high. We just need some bloody fish. You know, it's, I think it's got to the point now where I'm not too concerned what kind of fish we catch. Let's just catch loads of them. The men will be using every technique they've learned so far. But crucially, Mickey is also going to teach them to use a net, their best chance of getting a big catch. Come on, boys, let's get the fish in. While the men are away, Kate and Cheryl are checking the lobster pots. It feels nice doing what I know I can do, but I haven't been able to thus far. And the truth is, villages like this lost a lot of guys. Someone has to keep bringing stuff in. Many women in these coastal communities were often as skilled at inshore fishing as the men. Nearly there, nearly there. Got her. Got her. Got her. Yeah. Here we come, here she comes, here she comes, here she comes, here she comes, she comes. Oh, oh hello. That was a resounding plop. Oh. Got it. Not One, yet. two, three. In. Come on, you bugger. Nothing in the first one. Disappointing. Watch fingers. Right, that one next. Mickey wants the men to cast a net for the first time. We'll just rotate it a bit, yeah. Roll it round a bit, get that knock out of the way. Right, hold on then, hold it there, hold, hold it, it yeah. hold it, hold it. Ideally, if I was going to shoot the net, it would be right by those rocks in that channel there. The gill net works by snagging fish as they swim into it. It's anchored with a chain at both ends, and boys are used to keep it upright in the water. It's key not to tangle it. Leave, chuck your boy out, Gav. Come on in. Ready to go? Yeah. Good drive, right, got it over the side. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Good boys. But at 300 yards long, it's unwieldy and could easily pull an unsuspecting man overboard. Slowly, slowly, slowly. It's a bit of a mission, actually because we're competing against the wind and the size of the boat. There's more dangers involved. If anybody's feet are in the way, there's only one way to go, and that's over the side. That's it, that's it, good boys. Easy, easy, easy. Feet, feet, feet and hands and buttons. Watch, yeah. it, watch what you do it. Feet, Gareth, feet, Gareth. 
It's getting heavy now, boys, so keep it away from your body. The net's now anchored to the seabed, and as the 80-ton boat drifts away from it, the men are struggling as the net pulls against them. So I'll take the tension in. Take the tension in. Got the wind on it like a sail, look. Yeah. It's just not right. That's the worst ever I've shot a net. With the net at full stretch, finally the second anchor is dropped to the seabed. Okay, chain in. Chain in. Right, you go on, well. Easy. Easy, easy. Netting. Nice one, Mickey. Hold on, boys. Those are rough, though, is it, too? Yeah, it's quite intense. It catches the water, catches the wind, and it's pulling. And pulling all five of us uh, at the same time. It was dangerous, I was, boys, so I'm telling you now. They won't know if they've caught anything until tomorrow. Oopsie daisy. Just le lean on to me, I'm, yeah. I'm braced here, you're okay. These clothes are so cumbersome. Pain in the arse, aren't they? Kate and yeah. Cheryl are hauling in the last of the lobster pots. Oh, there's a lobster! Oh my god! We got one! There we are. Oh! Oh, we've got Big Daddy! That's a big bugger! Oh my oh. god! Whew. Look at that, we've got two! Wow. <laughs> That's it! Yee. I'm a nice. little nervous of picking it up, but I have got yeah. gloves. Wow. Oh my god, look at the size of that! He's feisty, look at him go for it! Two lobsters are worth a full day's pay. Oh, oh hang on, no, I can see eggs. Oh, she's a lady. She's a girl. Oh, she is a lady. Yeah, yeah definitely. Okay. Both ladies. Are they? No! Oh, no! In order to protect lobster numbers, egg-laden females are generally no longer taken in UK waters. Look at how beautiful oh, she is. She's lovely. She would have eaten beautifully. Yeah. Sorry, lovely. So, both lobsters are returned. Back you go. But they're still a positive. <laughs> We beat the boys, that's why I threw my head just now. <laughs> Not that we're competitive or anything. Tomorrow's another day, boys. Yeah. Bed early tonight now, and we'll see what tomorrow brings. What can you see, Evan? I'm trying to see the dad's boat. Oh, I wonder how they're getting on. I hope, for their sake, they'll get fish. It'll feel good coming back, being able to tell the wives and the kids, look what we've got. It'll be nice for them. It'll be nice for us too, mind. But... <laughs> After 24 hours at sea, the men are about to find out if their hard work has paid off. First, they're preparing to bring in a long line that they set yesterday. Have you still got him, Gav? Yeah, still Good. got him. On both sides. Gavin is spotting for the small boys that mark its position. Just for the port side. So I've lost them behind the sail now. Oh, I've got it. 80 yards. Yeah. Yep, got him. Straight ahead. 
Dead ahead, 100 yards. I got him, I got him. You got him, yeah? Yeah. Mickey's pulling up the boy that marks one end of the 200 yard long line with a hundred hooks along its length. Boy in. It's been suspended just above the seabed overnight. Okay, this is the one, boys. Two fish and every hook. Easy. Okay. Here it comes in, boys. Whoops, coming up. Whoops, coming up. Skate, boys. Two skates. Two skates. Two skates. Oh, oh one for that. Oh, well done, guys. Three new fish we never caught then before. Gareth's using a single blow between the eyes. That's it, good boy. To quickly and humanely Excellent. kill the fish. Right, feel those. Right. That's These the are Thornback side. Ray, commonly known That's by fishermen top, as skate. Beautiful, aren't they, really? They are amazing. Beautiful fish. Despite their excitement at go. catching a new species, the 100 hook long line has only delivered three fish. Let's call it half time. Half time in the cup final. It's not over yet. We take both. If something's happening, on the island. The women have decided to supplement their dwindling supplies with what they can forage from the land. Go there, ladies, let's go. They're heading for the mainland, across the tidal causeway. We don't have skirts to get wet. Which way, Auntie Cher? Down here. As an experienced forager, Cheryl's leading the women and will help identify what's safe to eat, if they can find anything. Oh, go, Cheryl. Hang on. Don't eat in my knickers. I don't mind it on my skirt, but not in my knickers. <laughs> it's in my knickers. <laughs> not the best way to get down the sand dune, was it? But quite fun. <laughs> It is lovely to be out of the house, away from the stove. It sounds awful, but away from the kids as well, just to have that little bit of freedom, to be able to have a laugh with the girls, it's lovely. Yannick's been left in the village, making sure the stoves don't go out, while 12-year-old Lily is looking after the younger children. In 1900, older children were often called upon to care for their younger siblings. I'm just going to do the washing, so then when my mum comes back from a hard day of work, she won't need to clean the dishes. Out at sea, the men are getting ready to pull in the net. Good stay, Expectations stay, stay. are high. I don't think we're going to have enough time to Lay it out. get all the fish out. Yeah. So it's going to be a bloody good massive haul, pulling it in as fast as we can. What we're trying to do is not snag under the boat. We don't want the boat to drift over the net. That's the, that's no. the idea. Good shot. OK, I've got the... We'll pull it in this way now. OK, boys. On to the deck now, then. We've got wind against us again. Right, Arwell? Yeah. Pull that line. What I've got? Yeah. They've got to move fast. The boat's drifting, the wind's blowing, and the net's dragging through the water. But hopefully, it's full of fish. You can get that fish out. We've got time. Quickly feed it through, feed it through. At the start of the 20th century, fishermen all along the Welsh coast regularly pulled in hundreds of fish in a single catch. 
OK, leave it in, keep pulling, keep yeah. pulling, keep pulling. Quicker, quicker. Watch your feet, lads. A lot of net down here. Oh, well, you're in it. Come on. Nice and steady. Nice and steady. Get it close now. But as they pull the net in, it's not looking good. Keep coming. Keep coming. It's caught. Feed round to me. It's caught. Feed round to me. Gav. Gav. This was snagged under it. Yeah, it's one big bloody mess. To make matters worse, the net's now tangled around the bow. It's hooked down here, see? If they don't release it quickly and the net tangles in the rudder, then the out-of-control boat could smash onto the nearby rocks. Boat hook, boat hook. Is it going? No. A member of the boat crew clambers overboard to try and free the net. Now, quick! I've got you. Don't worry about it, Bennett. Just get it off there. Mickey has no choice but to call it. Lift it! Lift it! They have cut the net to free it. The men haul in both halves of the damaged net. Bring that side in. Bring the side in. That's it. It's all in. It's a disaster. Oh, hell. One bloody fish. Is that it? Yeah, that's what we call an anticlimax. We put out a 300 yard net and had one fish in it. That feels like a right kick in the teeth. After two days at sea, the men have only caught a handful of fish. Up best, please. Not enough for four hungry families. Don't worry, we all understand your frustration. Really not happy at the moment. I'm disappointed for myself. And I'm more disappointment for the boys because they, they were really wanted that to work and I wanted it to work for them. But I don't know. So, what are we looking for, Sher? You might find puffballs, or you might find shaggy ink caps. <laughs> <laughs> Looking for shaggy ink caps, apparently. Oh, oh, look! One mouthful, that'll feed an army. Picking and eating wild mushrooms is potentially very dangerous, but Cheryl knows what she's looking for. Cheryl? Yeah? So have a look at this one. Oh, my goodness. That smells mushroomy. And I'm sure it's edible. Foraging for mushrooms and other wild food has been practised for millennia and would have been a key part of the diet in 1900. Oh, what's this? <laughs> Shag ink cap. Is oh, it? Fab. That's an ink cap. Absolutely. Well done. Pop it in. Good job. Let's get to the beach. <laughs> <laughs> On the way back, the women stop off at the causeway to pick seaweed. This is lava seaweed. Traditionally in Wales, this is the seaweed that we eat. So, in Welsh, we call it Baralau. I've never found it wild before myself, and there's plenty here, and it's free. Girls, I think the tide's coming in. Yeah, it's turned. Back at home, 
Lydia's busy making a traditional Welsh recipe of lava bread. The seaweed's been boiled for hours, and now she's frying it in bacon fat with a sprinkling of oats. But it's not to everyone's taste. I've added just a little bit of porridge oats. <laughs> Lydia. I'm really sorry. <laughs> it's seaweed aloe. <laughs> it's tasty. It's on your cheek. It's on your cheek there. You want to try that? It's called lava bread. Come on. Go on, tell me about it. Tell me about it. I like that. Good. I can put it on a piece of plate. I didn't think it was when I was. I would when I was. Yeah. Picking slime off a rock, but <laughs> I don't really like it. Lily, do you want to try? As the light starts to fade, the men have one last chance to put out a long line on their remaining net. OK, let's go then. Out she goes, nice and easy. Right. Nice and steady. Is it going out the right? Yeah. Grab it. Punching up there in a minute. Yeah. I'm on it. You got it? Yeah, I'm alright. Is there? Feed it out. Going, going, going. Go 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 right. Keep the tension on the boy. Keep the tension on the boy. That's it. That's better, boys. That's it. Get okay. Yeah. That's brilliant. Looking good. Anchor down. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. And Boy away. That looks a bit better, doesn't it? There you go, look at that. Magic. Well, Jesus, I want to thank you. At the end of the day, the weather turned and the conditions changed in our favour. I ask now in the name of Jesus that when we wake, there'll be fish on those lines, there'll be fish in those nets, and we better go home with fish and a good report for our families in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen, Amen. Sada. As dawn breaks, there's a flurry of activity on board. Right, Gareth, go, Gareth. go with the... Clive, go that way. In as quick as you can. Right. You come to the line. Who's so coming to you? Yeah. First, the men are bringing in the long line. Right down the deck, right down the deck. Empty hook. Mind your fingers. Mind your fingers. Bullhus. Wow. Wow. There, nice yeah. fish. A member of the dogfish family. We'll grab all the fish. With one swift, humane blow, the bull hus is dead. Right, line in. But one fish isn't going to feed the families for long. All the men's hopes are now resting on the net. That's it. Good boy, Gareth. Good boy, Gareth. <coughs> herring. Herring. In it comes, in it comes, quickly. We've got a net full of herring, boys. In it comes. Oh, that's there what we I go. like to yeah, see. There we go. Get the same. Good, good, good. That's good. what we like to see. Brilliant, boys. Well done. Oh. Yes. That, boys? That's what, that's what we like to see, it. boys. This, this is what I call sweet relief. It just proves if you put the effort in and you keep persisting, no matter your ability, sheer determination will win out in the end. That's what it's all about. <laughs> Absolutely ecstatic. Well done. Putting steam on the table, as they say. But we can live without a bit of the pressure of catching those. Finally, success. Anyone? 
82, 83. It's a new record. 84. 85. 85. That'll feed us for the week. Good effort, boys. Perfect. Well done. Perfect At the very last minute, the men have pulled it off. They've caught 85 herring, three mackerel, three thornback rays, and one bull hus. They can return home with their heads held high. Get home and give him a hug. <laughs> Get him away! Get him away! Daddy! 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 <laughs> Excited much? <laughs> Daddy! Evan! I can see you! Hey! Daddy! 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 That's the kind of welcome you want. After three days and two nights at sea. Hello. It's a hero's welcome. Okay. I can't tell you how glad I am to have my feet on ground that's not moving. <laughs> I've missed you so much. Daddy! 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 All right. So glad to see you. It's nice to be back. How, how many fish did you get? Oh, I pulled out the bag at the last minute. That was a chance for quite a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's only a little bit. It's only a little bit. Where are you? Yeah. Get your hand right. first. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it went very well. Did you, were you pleased to be out there? Yeah. I bet you were. <laughs> Tell me what you wanted to do. You've been out in that boat. Yeah, it was lovely. <clears throat> Show us some the money then, boys. <laughs> so, yeah. there's 80, 85, 85 herring mackerel in there. And pulled out the sea at what was it? Ten six o'clock this morning. Six o'clock this morning. Six, yeah. So what's that? That's a thorn ray. Thorn. Thornback ray. A touch. <laughs> I think we've come a really, really long way. Just yeah. starting to feel like a fisherman of sorts now. Wow! Isn't that beautiful? We'll have a good last week. It'll be good. Well, it will be smashing. <laughs> good effort. Well done. Hey. Give us a clap. Next time, the modern industrial age beckons, threatening their traditional livelihoods. There's no way you can keep with that. Can't stop progress, can you? The community are forced to adapt to stay afloat. Gav. Yes, Squire. Look at the size of my muscle. I'm not sure how much of a good idea this is. <laughs> I can't get out. But it all proves too much for one family. This is our end now, isn't it? This is actually our end.